So for me, there's three base moves in step. It's actually exactly the same in high low. Base moves. The first one is something that comes from a marching pattern. Okay, so a marching pattern on a step is basic step, right? Okay, so this would be obviously the most basic one. And certainly when we first started doing step, this was the pattern we began with. But we now have a few other moves that fit into that category that we can generally start from as well. One of them is called a mambo. You guys have learned the mambo? Yep. Okay. And that's the same sort of thing, in that your lead leg does not change. That's the, that's the key thing with the marching pattern. Your lead leg doesn't change. So if you're doing like an alternate stomp, your lead leg doesn't change, unless of course you do a number. Same thing with across the top. Across the top, if you don't do it with a tap, you will be not changing legs. It's a marching pattern. So one foot after the other. So that's the first base move. And it is also the most natural one because we tend to march one foot after the, after the other. The second base move that is, pertains to step that we also do in high-low is the alternate leg lead. Okay, so if we do an alternate leg lead with a tap, we can also make it a, what else can we make this into? Knee lift, yeah, what else? Kick, what else? Hamstring curl, anything else? Adapter, yeah. Do you guys do Superman? Yeah, leg out behind, so hip extension or arabesque, yep. So there, and there are base moves. So it's not often in a class now that we would start off with this move first and then move on to a knee lift or a leg curl. So that, we start with knee lifts or leg curls straight off and then there's a variation of the repeater. So that's a base move as well. But generally speaking, if you're going to start off with real basic moves or the organic moves, which means unprocessed, raw or pure, you'd probably start from here. If you have participants that are a little bit more skilled and have a point of recognition Point of recognition refers to something that they can refer back to that they know. Point of recognition is not a mumbo chasse spin with a twist on the end and Elvis flip over. That is not a point of recognition. You know, if you cue that to your participants, unless they, each of them had done that particular routine a thousand times before, there is no way they're going to be able to follow it. So, that's your second base move. It's the same as a step touch or a grapevine, because you're changing your lead leg. Then we have a final one, and this is a little bit different. You either start from the top, or you start from the floor, but it's where you do what's called an alternating lunge or tap. So from the top, you can lunge to the back, or you can take it to the side. From the floor, you take it up onto the step, whether it be that way, or this way. And that's different, because it's not a march pattern, is it? No? And it's certainly not an alternating leg lead pattern, it's that. And every single base move, or sorry, every single step move comes from one of those three. It, it starts from one of those three. So if you start from that point, and let's face it, even if you're a beginner, you've never done step before, you can do this. You can do that. Right? It might take you a couple of goes, but you'll get there. So if you start from that point, likelihood of success in your class has increased. Now this depends obviously on the skill level of the participants you have in your workout. For me, I'm a presenter, I travel the world. When I go back home, I teach the regular Monday night 6.30 class. There's an odd mixture of beginners and people a little bit older, or I have never done step before, or I did step 15 years ago, and you're like, okay, well, I don't know where they come from. And then you'll have people, I have people who don't speak English, because Melbourne's very much like Toronto, it's very multicultural. And I'll have people who say, yeah, I've been to step before, and the minute the music starts, you go, you must be tone deaf, because <laughs> they're off beat. So that's my class. Who has classes like that? Yeah, okay, cool, so you know where I'm coming from. So the choreography that I'm going to teach to you today is the choreography I teach back home in those classes. And what I wanted to do was make sure that you had stuff to take back home. So are we going to get really, really crazy? The answer is no. Am I going to do some rhythm changes? Yes. 
but I will layer from that base mood. And the thing to note here is that you have an opportunity to go, no, that's, not, that's as far as I'm going to go. That's all I'm going to teach my participants this week. And then next week when they've got a point of recognition, they've learned this learning curve, we go back to that learning curve and I'll just add another element of change. Because do you know what? We need to also consider that our participants, you know, we talk about progressive overload being important for our muscles and our body and for increasing fitness, but we also need to talk about progressive overload for coordination. Because generally speaking, most people do this all day. This is it. The fingers are highly coordinated. I was watching the news when I was in New York. We went to New York before we came to the cool city. And they're talking about RSI of the fingers and how much pain that they're in. I'm like, oh my God, but she doesn't get RSI of her feet or legs. So, you know, I think it's really important that we challenge the mind and the body and it's got to go together. Yeah?